All right, welcome back to the ONG Strike Zone. Brian, Marcus, Kelvin Roger here. I know a lot of you are buzzing in the chat room. Those of you who are watching the March Madness game, uh, Grambling mm -hmm. down two with under a minute to go. Oh, no, no, they're up. They're tied at 72. 15. Oh, so you're ahead of me even. Okay, look at yeah, that. 15 Z. seconds left. I'm watching online. I don't know who number one is, but he – oh, Carter. Cooper? Carter? He got a – Bank off the glass to tie the game up. And okay, then... I just saw that. So I'm probably about 10 seconds behind you then. Uh, also, an update from South Florida USF, uh, family baseball. I think we're down nine to four now in the eighth mm -hmm. inning, last I saw. So, um, yes. yeah, it kind of has gone the other direction for our guys. Um, all right, before we bring on Coach Gordon, let me put this up here. So that way you guys can already get your phones out right now, hit scan the code. Right there, the donation to the Rattler Athletic Fund, the women's basketball account, the pound, 0007. Again, the, the mission was to donate at least $60 for every point that was scored in our SWAC uh, tournament game. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, you can always do more. You can do less, but $60 is the goal. Every dollar going into the women's basketball account is going to help coach do what she needs to do in this offseason. Uh, those of you who caught her on the 220 Club this uh, afternoon, um, which was great, by the way. Uh, shout out to uh, Vaughn and uh, Mr. Eddie Jackson uh, for and, and Mr. Jackson uh, for, <laughs> for all the stuff that they do and everybody at the 220 Club. Um, so let me go on and bring on, without further ado, making her debut here on the ONG Strike Zone. It's our coach, Coach Bridget Gordon. Coach, how you doing, Coach? I'm doing fine. I can't can't complain. Hey, <laughs> Coach, it's a, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for coming on. Uh, it was great to uh, to see you uh, talking to uh, the 220 Club earlier this afternoon, uh, putting down putting down promises, coming through fulfilled. I mean, that that's pressure, but but she likes the pressure, though. Coach likes the pressure. Um, Coach, before we get into talking about, you know, FAMU basketball, here we are at the start of the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, that that's where the, the legend began. You know, you, you, you obviously you did some work and, and made a name for yourself as a high school ball player in the state of Florida. But when you went to Tennessee, you took it to another level. Four Final Fours, two national championships. What kind of memories come up for you when this time of year kicks in and starts? Oh, man, it's so many memories. And um, I guess that was one of the reasons that I wanted my young ladies to experience the swipe. Because once you get there, you want to continue to come back. So for that core young ladies that's that – um that was in the culture that was there last year, that I have the opportunity to come back next year, they're going to be excited because they know what it feels like. So I get chills all over again, think about the memories of a long time ago, but it's still excitement. Uh, the platform for women's basketball, when you have Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Kevin Garnett, and you have, you know, all those guys from the NBA talking about women's basketball, that's exciting to me because this is a platform that my mentor, my friend, uh, my coach uh, envisioned and, and laid the foundation. And we did so much work. I can recall, like, you know, while we were playing at the time, it was Old Dominion, uh, yeah. Louisiana Tech or Texas in the middle of our rugged SEC season, it was to, to bring forth and let people understand the women game that we really can play. We don't play half court anymore. It ain't three on three. Uh, we all women can play five on five and we can dominate. So when I go back and think about those days, it reassured me that I'm teaching my young ladies how to play basketball the right way. And that's the basic fundamentals. And that's all you hear the greats talk about even Paul Pierce and, and Kevin Garnett in the studio talking about it. So um, I'm excited where the game is at, and I'm excited to be the head coach at FAMU. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, was, there a, was there a game 
or a moment that what what was I mean the two uh, two championships has to be obviously the the seminal moments, but I know it's the, it's a journey just to get to those championship games. Is there a game or a moment that you look back on and said, okay, th- that that was where me being Bridget Gordon, me being who I am today, where it was sort of defined or where that was my game. That that was it. Is there which which game or which moment can you look back on and say that was it? It was so many moments that, you know, when you look back on on my career, because I'm so uh, highly decorated. But if I can go back in time and I just think about that first Final Four, 1986 in um, Kentucky, and I'm going up against the great Cheryl Miller, USC. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. of course, we don't win, but just to get there and get that experience and get the hungerness that, like, okay, Cheryl, we lost to USC, Cheryl, Cheryl Miller the most dominant woman in the game at the time. And I think she is the best that ever uh, domed in a uniform for the women's side. It's like, okay, I want to come back and I want to win it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got okay. that taste, that taste. And I thought about running on the track at 645 in the morning, running more than the track team. And just all the hard work and the dedication that you had to put in, trimming up, coming in from high school, not in the shape that I needed to be, not knowing the level at the collegiate, but at the end, that reward was so great to be there and um, lights shining, camera, let's go. I'm like, this is fun. I can do this forever. So get back there in 87, I think that was the, the key because I wanted to win the first one for Pat. It was the conversation that she had in my home with my mother when she came in and she was like, hey, I've been knocking on the door with Bridget. I think I can knock the sucker down. So um, going to the final four my freshman year, and winning it for in my sophomore year, it's nothing like being a first. And that's what I was trying to uh, to persuade my young ladies. Once you go to the swipe for the first time, there will never, ever be a first again. And right. anytime you talk about the swipe, they got to also mention the first team that was in the tournament. So they will always be mentioned in being a part of the first part of history. Yes, indeed. Kelvin, go ahead. Well, a couple of things. First of all, Coach, I don't know what that background is back there, but it is fly. I am digging it. I'm that that is hype. I, I love it. Number two, as a seasoned basketball ticket holder and someone who saw just about every game, um, I really enjoyed the product that you put on the uh floor and the growth of your of, of your of your team as the season went forward. I want you to kind of describe you know starting out the journey for this season for this found you team. From when you get in there in August, September, to you start playing in November, and then you get out of you have a tough out of conference I mean, schedule, and then you get into conference play, and then you could see confidence to the point where even the best teams in the conference they had to fight to, to get a victory from the Rattlers because <laughs> the we we had three four girls falling out and we were still right there. So just kind of talk about this team and coaching this team and some some of the things that you you, you learned in your first year as a head coach. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say you got to give a lot of credit to the young ladies um, for trusting in the first year. I call myself season um, head coach, uh, being around the block a couple of times. But just the, the fact that I took the job, first day on the job was August the 14th. First day of school was August the 28th. We get out on the track that morning on the 29th and we all excited and happy. And we get an email at 12 o'clock. The school is shutting down from the tornado that came through. So you look back at that and we don't actually get started until after Labor Day. That's a journey. And I was taken on as a first year head coach for the first two months. I was solo dolo. I was by myself. My staff hadn't been hired yet. Um, Just, you know, the timing of everything coming in. And just looking at me taking a a one-woman show at that time. But it was a a challenge that I was up for. And as I look back at it, that I was built for everything. Everybody was like, you've been to a lot of different um, universities. And good thing that I did that, that I was here, there. I took a little bit of DNA from here, a little bit of DNA from there, then sprinkled my own experience on it. And that's how I came up with the formula that I did. And one thing I got to realize is that Pat Summit produced a lot of great, great players. 
right? We got jerseys hanging in the gym. You still got Candace Parker playing, Tamika Catchings. And, you know, I can go hose close, Shamika hose close. I can go um, along the line. And she got a lot of coaching, our tree. But yes. when I look at it and, and I go back and look at what I've done, I think I'm the closest thing to her. Yes. I was called Pat Jr. when I was there at the university. And now as a coach, I understand why. Uh, you really had to show these young ladies that you cared. And when you showed them that you cared, when I showed them that they cared, they was willing to listen. When they understood that I didn't just talk the talk, but I walked the walk, not on one day basis, every day. Every day I brought it. Energy. I brought it every day. It, it didn't matter if it was 545 walking over there to TCC Community College when we was out of the gym because of homecoming or whether we was at Gaither Community Center or whether we was down at FAMU DRS. I brought it. And it didn't matter what condition, where we was at, I didn't lose focus on the goal. And we signed in the um, in our locker room. It said the journey to the tourney because I really believed that we had enough to win if I taught them the basic fundamentals and they were to buy in because we was going to play hard. That was not an option. We was going to compete and play hard for 40 minutes every day, no matter who it was. And that's what a lot of people don't realize, too, that I only had 12 scholarship players. I added four walk-ons, eventually had two, and we ended up with um, 13 women washed her. And two of those young ladies was out for injury, had concussions in and out the season. I had meniscus in and out the season, and that did not stop us. I just told them it was the next woman up, and I prepared them. I got on the walk-on just as hard as I got on the POY because I had to prepare them for the moment that happened that the last four minutes in the game, we with two walk-ons, and we still clinched the breath go to the first white tournament. So when I look back over all the work that I put in, I was never afraid because I was never afraid as a coach. So I wanted to give them everything that I was that I didn't have in somebody to look up to, if that makes sense. I wanted to be that person that I needed in my career as a young black woman coming from the land, Florida. So that's who I am for my young ladies. And that was somebody that looked like me, talked like me, walk like me and they've been through a journey coming from a single parent home and mm -hmm. understand everything that it took to be a champion at every level. That's rare. And I had to understand that I was rare and everybody wasn't going to buy into it, but I want to thank them for buying into it and me pushing it. Cause I tell you sometimes guys, uh, when I'm in a zone, I didn't even realize what I was doing, accomplishing. It was all God. I got to give God all the credit. That um, he helped me and propelled me for this position. Because I was talking to Tommy from the 220 Club, and he said he told AD, he said, Bridger wrote a miracle. And whether people want to give me credit or not, I was never the type of player that needed somebody to pat me on my back to say, well done. When I look myself in the mirror and when I come home at night, if my tank had been empty and I can look myself in the mirror and say, Bridger, you gave it all you got, that's all I got. Because I'm give you, i going to give you 100% every day not take a day off every day. And that's what I require for my young ladies. Excellence, sit in the first three rows in the classroom, get a 3.5 GPA, represent FAMU, the number one HBCU in the country, six years strong. Mm -hmm. Be proud of the name that's not only in the front, but in the back, because my father, native, native Jamaican, said, hey, people can take anything away from you, but they can never take your name. So leave your name, let that be your legacy. And that's what I teach my young ladies. Let your name be your legacy and let it mean something. Mm. Amen. Why, right, cool. That, boy, you, that, that, that's a recruit, man. I tell you, boy, just just make sure to clip clip this. Anybody you want you want to know you want to know why the phone is blowing up? Why coach's phone is blowing up? Now you know. Uh, that's that's the passion. That's the man, uh, Marcus. What you got, Marcus? You on well, mute, Coach Gordon? Uh, thank oh, you for you. joining us this evening. <laughs> oh, I'm on mute. Okay. No, no, no you're good. You're I good. Have you're a good. Okay, I have a question for you. Actually, I got like four, but I know I can't get them all in. But one thing I wanted to ask, um, and I've watched a couple of the episodes that you've been on the 220 QB Club, and you've talked about uh, building the culture and the sisterhood. So I wanted to ask uh, how much roster building and chemistry or how much of a challenge, if it is a challenge, to build it in the climate that we have today with the transfer portal or having – become more prominent and we're seeing players who had pretty good seasons and maybe leading their teams 
opting to jump in the portal and just the overall roster churn that's proliferating collegiate athletics? Well, it's important to do your homework. And one thing that I know since I've been in this game, character was number one for me. Now, then, and forevermore. Because I pry on my ability to, to coach and um, develop not just basketball players, but successful young women. Because what I have is a, a life skill that I'm teaching my young ladies, using that orange ball as the resource and the tool to get them where they need to be at in, in life period. So character always was high on me and then coachability. So as I'm looking through the portal or I'm looking at junior college or I'm looking at a high school senior, the first thing I ask the coach, I want to know about the character, the attitude, the coachability, uh, discipline, because I'm not going to waver. I'm old school with a new flavor twist, but discipline and respect is earned. It's not demanded. So my young ladies have to come in with that. Because no matter how you grow up in your home, I tell them, this is my family. I'm the head of the household. I do not know how your parents ran their household. But in my household, you're going to buy by my rules. And you're going to be respectful anywhere you go, whether I'm there or not. So that's when the character part comes in. Because they representation not only of me, but FAMU University. Remind you, the number one HBCU t- uh, school in the country. So character has always mattered to me. And I want to know about their character, coachability. And of course, they got to have some ability to play basketball. But as you've seen that, you know, um, I helped the Ariana Grizzle transfer in from preseason number two to a bench mm-hmm. player last year into the POI from a seven place team. So that mm-hmm. speaks for itself what I'm capable of doing under my um, coaching and development. So all I can say is uh, everybody need to watch out. And that's not a threat. It's just, I know who I am and whose I am. And I have the ability to uh, bring out the best of everybody that I encounter. So now I got a full summer because see, most people don't understand. I took the job on August the 14th and school started August the 28th. I did not have a summer. So I'm gonna go back to one of the questions that uh, we we talked about, I alluded to, is that the non-conference, was like our preseason in the summer. It built us. Everything that we were going to see and face in the swipe, we faced in non-conference. Now, we were 1-10. and 10. We should have been better than that, but we were close. But I was coaching some young ladies that have never won before. I mean, we right. lead at halftime. We should have won five. We could have been five and six. We could have easily been six and six, and we could have yep. easily been seven and five. But it just didn't work out. But what it did was it showed us, then give us the big head, that the trust into the system, trust in me, trust the process, and go to work. And um, everything else will take care of itself. That's why we knew that we could get to the tournament if we just continued to let the uh, cake bake in the oven and bring it out at the right time. Some of the uh, SWAC teams peaked too early. We needed to be playing our best basketball at the time. And I'm, I'm willing to say here tonight, if um, Ms. Delancey don't go down, it could have been another outcome in, in that game. Absolutely. 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 Thank you, Coach Absolutely. Gordon. I appreciate the answer. Um, so, Marcus, I'm a, I know you said you had a couple, so I'm going I'm to throw it back to you in a second. But I, I got to ask, Coach, uh, speaking of uh, our, our POI, one, one thing you, you brought up today, that she was the unanimous player of the year uh, in the SWAC. Uh, I, I think you had said that. We, and I know there were a lot of – favorites from or people outside talking but it was good to know that she was a unanimous selection i keep i've said this a couple times if you look at that there was a stretch a seven game stretch that i keep saying ariana she she was un, unbelievable i mean she there were a walking bucket as i like to say she was scoring any way possible uh at the free throw line i think she had a game where she was like 20 or 24 and I mean, she shot like three of 12, but she was 20 of 24. And I'm just like, who does that? Who goes 20 of 20? I mean, Ariana Grizzle, that's who. And then she'll have another night, drop 30 on you. But all of it started after that UAPB road game. Will you, was there, I just, I just want a confirmation. You could say it, yes or no. Did you, was there anything said after, because she, she was like a different person after that game. 
was there anything you said to her or was it just a light bulb went off for her? Anything you did schematically or differently? Uh, just talk about that little stretch and what that meant for not only Ariana, but the team. It was just a conversation at that time. You know, everybody's still trying to find themselves. And uh, you got to go back to we didn't have the summer to work out and get to know one another. Um, as we was going through practice, it was evident that she was our best scorer besides her and um, Olivia Delancey, right? And Olivia was still considered a pup. Ariana had the, the SEC and understand what that looked like being in Alabama for three years. So at that time, I had a conversation and I was like, the team going to go as you go, Ariana. Now, that's not to put pressure on you. You either going to handle it, pressure either breaks the pipe or make diamonds, right? So it's not to try to put pressure on you, but I knew at that time she had enough arsenal in her bags to propel us to the next level. And I also had to get her teammates to buy into understanding that Ariana is our go-to player. But I told her you have to earn that. I can't just say, hey, Ariana is our go-to player. You're going to have to earn that respect from your teammates, and that's up to you. Because every time we go a little bit further in the season, it becomes a little bit closer to your end. And you can't go back and have the season again like everybody else on your team. So, Ariana, the hourglass has been flipped. Now, you need to think about what you want to do. I'm here. If you want to get better, we can talk about it. But – it was a conversation, and she she was willing to take on that challenge. And that's the thing about Ariana. She wants it. Just as quiet, yes, ma'am. Sometimes I wanted her to just say, shut up, coach, and do something. But it was always, yes, ma'am. I kept my foot right down her neck. I kept that foot on her the whole time. And all she would do is, yes, ma'am. Never disrespect me at one time. And that's all you can ask. And that was the reason why she turned into the player that she was. It was always there. I just brought it out of her. A lot of the coaches and a lot of the people around – knew that she had the talent. I mean, that's why she went to um, Alabama because there was a talent that they saw when she was playing with the Canadian um, teams, uh, national teams. But I just had to bring it out. And that was the thing that Ariana came in. She told me, thank you for reinventing my love, reinventing or helping me to to love the game that I once loved before. So it was like um, – yeah, it was a conversation. It was just a, the relationship. I know a lot of them, you know, they talk about with Dawn Staley, how she has a relationship with her players. And I do the same thing. That's the only way you're going to get them to play hard, that they got to know that you care in order for you to get the best out of them and allow you to push them. You're still going to get resistance, but at the end of the day, when they know that you care and you'll give them the shirt off your back or you'll do anything for them, they'll go through a wall for you. This new generation. Even though they're gonna question you going through the wall, coach, why are we doing this? Why are we doing it? Why are they going through the wall? When I would just go through the wall for summit, don't say nothing. They're gonna question me going through the wall. Yeah, so true, so true. Kelvin, go ahead. I, I told them I'm gonna tell y'all a little joke real quick. I say y'all the generation that you are paid to go to sleep and you wake up and quit. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Yes. I got you. I got it. That probably went over some people's head. It right did. Here. It probably went over some people's hey. head. That's right. Yep. If you, if you haven't worked or coached with young people, mm -hmm, there it is right there. Yep. And then you just try to teach them that once you quit, you'll quit at anything because it's easy. Yeah. It's yep. easy. You got to push yourself to the limit because I used to feel the same way with Summit had us running and running. My body had been in shock for since I had been there. Right. As a, a basketball came easy to me. I didn't really have to work hard in high school. Triple team, double team. I still can average double points and double rebounds. I didn't never have to work hard and push myself. So I was afraid that if I push myself too far, I might pass out. I never passed out. So that's the message that I get to my young ladies. You're not going to pass out. You're going to be fine. I promise you. Just get to the limit. You'll see. But if you don't allow yourself to be pushed to the limit to see that you can go through that wall, you'll never know it if you don't try. But once you quit, it's going to be easy to quit at anything. Yes, indeed. Kelvin, go ahead. Coach, I want you to talk about uh, your, your your first tour of uh, SWAT basketball, women's basketball. Basketball. There were some very impressive wins out of conference. Um, Arkansas and UAPB come to mind. I know Jackson State had some out of conference wins, Grambling, and um, Jackson State's getting ready to take on UConn. Um, 
we had an out of conference win, fam. You and we, we had a, and a couple of coaches. So just talk about the state, of your impression, your first year with uh, Swax basketball. I'm very impressed. It was ironically, I'm a um, basketball junkie, uh, an advocate for sports, especially women sports. But uh, I'm a great football fan, so I love family football. But just going back last year at this time when um, I was leaving Cincinnati, I was watching the Swag Tournament. And I um, had no idea a year later that I would be participating in the Swag Tournament. But the Swag is in a great place. That's why you saw a lot of the teams beat some of the other players, even though we are the lowest on the totem pole. Everybody, even when they've been Division Two and come up and become Division One, they still higher than us. But the Swike uh, Conference is very, very good. Uh, guard oriented, uh, great guards in there. You got some forwards that stretch forwards, undersized, shoot the three, power, athleticism. So I'm anxious to see what Gremlin is going to do and Jackson State against UConn. But when I look uh, look at it, I mean, the guards rule. You got press, you got um, offense, you got defense, you got coaches dressing on the sideline like it's their Sunday best. <laughs> I mean, it's entertaining, and I enjoyed every minute of it. And like I said, I'm so excited. If you can't see it in my face and feel it, I'm so excited about next year. I can't hardly wait. I can't hardly wait. Um, I'm ready for it. Um, I was built for it, and I understand what it's about. We're going to be pressing each other. I told him I want to bring Nolan Richardson on the women's side, 94 feet of hell, to fam you. That's my – That's I'm a defensive-minded coach. I scored a lot of points at Tennessee, but I told him I'm so competitive. I hate – I hate – my sister say, don't use that word. I say, I do. I hate losing more than I love winning. So I was a competitor. I played on both sides of the ball, and that's what I'm right. teaching my young ladies. Like, go head on and knock them out on the offensive end and clap back at them on the defensive end and lock them up. So that's my mentality going into this offseason. I'm super excited. And it's a lot of great basketball and a lot of uh, uh, great coaches and teachers of the games in the Swike. So the Swike is in great hands. And um, before yeah. you know it, you know, I would like to say kudos to uh, Tamika and um, being ranked in the top 25 moving up. Uh, in um, mid-major poll and Grambling yep. State not far behind them. You know, first-year head coach. Um, you know, kudos to them. Good luck to uh, both of them again um, in the tournament. All right. Marcus, go ahead. Yes, uh, once again, Coach, um, I kind of like to follow recruiting um, for FAMU. So that's one thing I'm kind of – I don't know any little tidbits as of yet, but I wanted to ask – uh, with the, let me see if I can read my with the landscape of recruiting, now how would you are you going to balance between transfers and high school recruits, and also I guess more importantly I guess over the last few years we've noticed uh, our previous coaches have had kind of on again off again relationship with local talent and in state talent and kind of picked a little bit but not as much especially when FAMU DRS had a few state championship teams and we didn't get any players to come to FAMU from FAMU DRS. And so to what degree will you have that balance between transfers with the proliferation of the portal, high school students, and having in-state or local Big Ben recruiting? It, it will be a, definitely a mixture. And um, with the FAMU, FAMU League community, alums, supporters, um, Farewell that's going to jump on this bandwagon because the train is coming. <laughs> you need to just know that the women's basketball team is in great hands. Uh, I established contacts over 20 years ago, and I still have them. If I showed you my phone of the coaches that's coaching and know of young ladies leaving their program at the Division One level and, and, and want their young ladies to come play for me, it's, it's unreal. I... I didn't even have to go look in the portal from some of the calls in my phone. You can hear it in the background. It's been pinging since Monday, actually since Saturday, that that people were giving me a heads up that some people might be jumping into the portal. So uh, as far as recruiting, because of what we've done as a HBCU academically and now basketball, what I brought here to FAMU, women's basketball, uh, I tell you, the sky is the limit. I'm right now, I told him my, my head hurt right now. I have a migraine of just trying to uh, 
to, to make sure that the young ladies that I bring into this culture, this sisterhood is the correct fit. Cause I got to do my young ladies justice that I pushed them and showed them what this culture and what winning and what success look like in the classroom, on the basketball court and in the room. So, um, I have a lot of decisions that I have to make. And I said it earlier in the 220 club that some young ladies you might see back, some of them you might not. It's not that I don't love them. It's a business. And it's a decision that I have to make. And that's one of the reasons that um, our VPAD Tiffany hired me to make those hard decisions. Uh, but um, I'm going to tell you that once again, uh, next year, next season, you will definitely see a product and they would definitely have my DNA because some of those young ladies that I choose from the portal, from JUCO uh, in high school, would definitely uh, resemble uh, my energy and my passion and my knowledge for the game. And don't forget, we signed two young ladies early in the uh, early signing period in November. Uh, Eve Alexander, uh, full-time state champion in Louisiana. And we got another. We got one POY leaving. We got another POY, uh, Denia Griffin. Demaya Griffin coming in from East Georgia State uh, Junior College. So just know that you're in great hands. Uh, it's more to come. You know, I like to say we coming. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. We coming. Coach, Coach I, 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 love, I love the honesty about the the roster management. I mean, it and and it's it's I think it's rare because I think a lot of people hide behind it. Um because they, 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 I mean, we understand that with the portal and everything, and you have to be able to put a team together that, you know, embodies what you want. Um, and and you know, I, I, so I appreciate that honesty, and you know, it's not, and it's an honesty that I'm sure you, you, if you haven't already had, you, you, you're gonna have with with the young ladies and and kind of deciding you know, who to offer those opportunities to. Um, can I, can I, I, I got to ask about Nishani Gilbert and I, from day one, Shani, I mean, she, and, and I saw it, I think I, you know, I've had an appreciation since day one, early in the season, uh, especially when I came to the first home game and then you see it again in the season. And then I saw it while well, she's wearing a mask. She's wearing a mask. But she's still in there boxing out. I, you know, I don't know if Nashani's a guard, forward, a center. I feel like she plays all five positions. She can play all five. I mean, talk about Nashani, if you will. And then I know we got a few questions that people in the chats and emails have asked. But I just want you to take a second and talk about Nashani because I, I don't know if there's an Iron Woman award that you give or if there's something. I mean, when we do our awards, we might have to come up with an award for Nashani because I thought she was just everything and everywhere. For your team but if you and and then of course if there's anybody else that you want to talk about from this past season please feel free to do but i i just want to hear you praise or talk about the shiny because she was it she i thought she was a um she, she was awesome this year to watch play yeah i told him that you know we, we, i had the conversation early on when you asked me about ariana ariana was our go-to player but the shiny is called the glue player she gets the hard hat award right she it doesn't matter if I go tell the guard, the point guard, to go guard 6'5", Angel Jackson, she was going to do it and do it well. So um, she was that piece. She was the glue that kept everything together. Uh, she was the one that's going to take the charge. She was the one if you get beat. She was the one communicating. She was everything, like you said. She didn't let the mask um, stop her from her nose to a, a, a tooth, what had been um, from her feeling that fell out way in November the 20th. And then, you know, didn't have time to back in January. Her face swole up. That didn't stop Nishani. Anything didn't stop Nishani. Uh, she was the heartbeat of the team. Um, very outspoken, coming from a junior college, was used to scoring, and she accepted her role. She was willing to do whatever it took for us to be successful. So hats out, kudos to Nishani for what she did all year long. And a lot of people wouldn't recognize that, but I made sure that the team knew that Nishani was the key to this team. 
Um, we went as she went too because she was giving us everything. When the Shawnee wasn't around and she missed a couple of games, and when she went there, I said, You guys, where's Shawnee at? I mean, I knew Shawnee was going to be on the help side. You get beat. I knew she was going to take a charge. I knew she was going to rotate. I didn't even have to look. I knew on the help side, I'm already going back because I know they're going to call a charge. You know, that was the confidence I had in the Shawnee. And the other thing is about it, I go back to when one of the commentators um, at Detroit Mercy, oh, this is her third school in three years. Well, right, you're right. But at Northwest Florida State, she got her AA. At, uh, at Daytona State, she got her AS. And next month, well, two months in May, she will have her bachelor's degree here. So mm -hmm. she's been in three different schools, and she got three different. Um, That's right, three different degrees. degrees. Speak yeah. on it. Exactly. So put some respect on that name. Yeah, put some respect on her name when you use that name. And it's a lot of stuff that Nishani just battled just to be on the court in itself. She's tough. She's tough as nail. And um, it'll be hard to replace. It's nice to, have to say that Nishan is graduating and she'll be back for, for another year. So that is a key, key uh, piece, ingredient uh, to the success of our team because she's going to be willing to do whatever. And when you have a young lady like that and you build around her and the recruits see that when they come in and I talk about that, who wouldn't want to play with a, with a young lady like that that will sacrifice and give her all for the sake of the team, for winning, give up her ability to score because she knew that she needed to play defense and rebound and do that at undersized uh, players. So um, kudos to Nishani. Uh, a lot of the stuff that she did does not show up on the stat sheet, but believe me, Coach Pressure talks about it in the locker room and in the film sessions. And she has an IQ. She knows the game. Right. Mm -hmm. She'll tell you, I'm not the best ball handler, coach. I'm not this and I'm not that. And I told the team, put some respect on the name. Shawnee knows the game. And if she's talking to you, listen. There it so is. So, you, you know, you did it. And you just talk about a lot of stuff. You had Delancey, my only recruit, to come in and you asked her to take on a load. Uh, school started the um, August the 28th. Well, she was on campus that Wednesday and came back on August the 27th, three days later, and started school. So she was kind of like thrust into the to the to the fire pit, and you know that's kind of hard as a, a a a young a young, even though she's a sophomore, she's a young sophomore. She just turned twenty uh, yesterday um, to put her in the fire, and that's why I said if she don't go out with that concussion, we can have a a different result. But uh, she brought in brought her best as the second best player on the team. Her and Ari was willing to be Robin and Batman, Batman and Robin. And she said out of mouth, Ariana, you can be Batman. I would love to be Robin. So when you have a a, a selfless kid that willing to sacrifice, because she scored 18, almost 19 points at uh, St. Pete last year as a freshman. So was willing to give up her points and allow Ari to take the show. You could ask for three better people to build around. And then you have the um, the two sisters, sub, uh, um, Ina and Yvette, coming from Spain. And then Ina just finding her own role uh, on the team. She ended up being one of our best on-ball defenders at the end of the year. And once again, we miss her too. So you talk about a lot of missing pieces, and we were still able to get there and do something that people didn't think that we can do. Ina goes down and shoot around when we getting ready to play Cookman. So you think about a coach that's already minus Perry, minus some injuries that we had early on, and now you hear about um, Ina not being able to play. And that's when I knew, um, thank God, I had prepared my walk-ons, which is um, Naya Bostic, that, that family tradition. Yeah. Her yeah. sister was the first female uh, uh, drum major. Drum major, mm -hmm. drum major mm -hmm. right. And so it's been in a family, and she decided to quit the Marching 100 to come be a part of the family women's basketball team. And then you have uh, Amaya Moore, Lord, that's just a, a freshman on campus, and she went from being the manager to when one of my other walk-ons was um, let go, that she stepped into the role. And she planned the last four minutes to, to uh, help us clinch a bid to our first white uh, tournament. So you just look at everything that happened on. You have Jaleel Sharp, and you have a lot of players that they call them misfits. They didn't average a lot of points where they was at. So you talked about you had people that had then wrote them off. But but okay. Coach P, Coach Pressure believed in them. And I said in my um, press conference when I spoke to him, like, hey, I know all about you guys. I got an offense for you, and it's going to work out fine. Just trust the process, but let the cake stay in the oven. And I told him about two weeks ago, the cake is ready to come out. It's time for us to show everybody what we're made of. And we was able to uh, pull it off and, and, and win 
with a lot of different support from, from everybody. And like I said, we went through, we battled injuries from the beginning of the season, concussions when um, Annabella LaTortis was playing her best basketball. She suffered yeah. concussion is out for 10 days and she was just getting her groove. Then you lose Nashani, then you lose Ina, then, then you know, um, Olivia goes down uh, in the first game, uh, early in the third quarter. So uh, we was able to do and work. We worked a miracle this year, but uh, a lot of kudos to the ladies and uh, for allowing me to push in and just trusting, trusting in me. Everybody had a piece, but Nishani was definitely a key. And like we, we talked about Ariana, uh, there was a big chance if Delancey stayed being consistent that she could have been um, the newcomer of the year. Nishani could have easily been defensive player of the year, guarding all the different positions. But uh, those young ladies are hungry. They already didn't text me and say, Coach, I'm ready to work. I said, all right, boot camp start March the 25th. That's Monday. Go get y'all 10-day rest and I'm getting mine. And it's back to business. And um, I told them, hey, it's a new chef in town, and it ain't going to be that we start from August. We getting ready to start from March, and that's going to be different. And um, I just hope they allow me to push them and trust the process and uh, – Good things should be happening on the hill, the highest of the seventh hill. Hey, that, that's what's up. Um, okay, a couple questions here we got for you, Coach, of uh, some people who've been uh, chiming in. Um, you may have touched a little bit on this when it comes to, like, the recruiting here uh, from uh, Melissa Wilson. Uh, any cities that you plan to target for recruiting? How does your recruiting budget or how does the recruiting circuit work for you? Or will it work for you? Well, that's what I, I've been advocating. And that's why that $60 to donate uh, to that 0007 plays an important part because uh, during the year, I don't like to get out because I got to recruit my players because everybody know about the portal. I need to be home recruiting my players that's in my own locker room as much as I need to be out recruiting. So if I can do a lot of the recruiting in the summer to the AAU events, which is now in April, May, there's some in June that we don't attend and you have July. Those are my biggest time moments that I go out and recruit during the AA season. Then um, when there's uh, time as a first year head coach for me to get out and see the young ladies in their high school, um, at the high school basketball teams, there's a chance for me to get out. But the most important time is during the summer in the fall, uh, spring with AAU basketball. Um, with that and just, I don't, I don't know if Marcus or Kelvin, if you had a question related to that, but the question that popped into my head was in terms of your staff. I mean, uh, will you look to increase, add to the staff so that maybe you you guys can be in more places? Because if I'm not mistaken, you only had two assistants on staff, or am I right or wrong on that? Or maybe you had three in total. I had three, and okay. um, the NCAA has um, upped that number to six, so that would have been four, including myself as a head coach, and two other coaches. Fortunately, I had, uh, if you didn't realize, I had two volunteer coaches. Uh, yeah. The gentleman, the tall gentleman, the Spanish, yeah. that is uh, Coach Brooke, Florida State head coach, husband, that came over and volunteered uh, with me. Uh, so that was a blessing. And the other gentleman, um, James Henry, uh, is my best friend of 40 years. We've been friends since the eighth grade and he lives here in Tallahassee. So he volunteered his time. So I had two volunteer coaches and three uh, full-time assistants. Um, yes. Um, I will be looking to um, add to that, that coaching, my coaching staff. Yes, sir. Um, Brian. Yeah, go ahead. Quick, I got a question about camps. Are you going, are you looking to do any basketball camps are you going to be able to, or are you going to kind of rely on the AAU circuit for, for this spring and summer? No, I'm going to have an um, elite uh, basketball camp in August, and I should have those dates in there. We're still trying to uh, sort out those dates in August. It's either going to be that, uh, making sure that they're done with AAU, where I can bring those actually young ladies to campus and see our beautiful campus and facilities that we have. So those dates are either going to be that first weekend in August or that second weekend in August, right before uh, school starts. So we're going to look to do an elite camp. And in June, I'm looking to do a, a kids camp or a teen camp. And I will get those dates out. I'll come back on and I'll tell yes, you. Yes, please do. Please yeah. do. All right. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Brian, let me jump in real quick. There's something that ties into what our coach just said. 
is one of my other questions. Uh, given the pedigree of program that you had when you as a student athlete at Tennessee and your travels and your coaching career and what you were brought upon, what would be the ideal level of support to get you where you want this program to be? It could you know, be either you, just, you know something physical or a dollar amount or a combination of both. The things that you would like, things that you would need, or things that you want to take it where you see the potential for the Fami women's basketball program. Well, you know, money talks, and um, everybody know how the economy and where we at uh, with the cost of living. Uh, when you look at the stipend for for Flor Floridians in state, it's not much. Uh, for us to go out, but it still costs dollars. And you look at uh, geographically where we at, uh, the fly in to Tallahassee Regional, you only got three different airlines. That's um, Civil Way, and we don't want to get on there. Um, no offense to them. And then you got uh, Delta and you have um, American. Or you go two hours to Jacksonville, Southwest, or you go two hours to uh, Panama City, to have those Southwest flights. So it costs money. And now you can fly in uh, parents, uh, grandmother. If parents have been divorced and remarried, you can also, you have your traditional family now and in married. So you can bring in five people and everybody know how much round trip tickets cost now for young ladies to come to campus. Also, uh, we in competition, uh, real estate, everything costing now. So you get to bring young ladies in and entertain them for 48 hours. So you want to have a good time and take them out to the restaurants. You got to pay for the hotel. You, you you pay for the entertainment of up to five people uh, for 48 hours. Then you talk, just talk about the travel myself or myself or one of my staff members to go out and travel, uh, rent a car, hotel, uh, the package, you will you will not believe how much a a recruiting packet costs at an AAU event. A Division One packet, you can pay anywhere from five hundred dollars for one packet, and uh, each edition of coach is two fifty, and a pass just to get in is seventy five dollars or one hundred and fifty, and that's just for a three day tournament. And then the next three days that you get, you pay that same amount over again. Every tournament that you go to, and I have those four coaches, we have to pay a a, another entry fee, which can be up to $500 per coach, depending on if you're going there by yourself or an additional coach up to $250 uh, for an additional coach. So if you can see there, uh, money needs to be raised just for me to have the, the flexibility to go out and recruit in the summer when it counts the most. And I can give uh, my young ladies that I have on campus all the love and attention that they need. And I can send uh, my assistant coaches out during the year. But when you talk about a dollar amount, I'm going to sit down with um, my ADVP and see what way my budget is. But I know I didn't have recruiting budgets up to $90,000 or $100,000 um, to be able to go out and to recruit. So you're talking money. Um, I talked to the 220 club about just having a shooting gun where my young ladies don't need a rebound. They just put the balls in the gun and they spit it out. They don't have no reason not to get in the gym. They don't need nobody. They just got the gun. I didn't bought them an extension cord to hook up to the men gun. Um, we would like to have our own gun uh, where we can get in the gym. I talked about uh, Mac computers. Uh, Synergy is the, uh, where all the games are stored. Yep. Uh, we, we, we can watch everybody. Synergy is a new cheat sheet. When back in the day when Coach had the VHS and she had to write down the number. <laughs> now Synergy breaks it down. It lets you know if you're good in a PNR, which is a pick and roll. What's your free throw percentage? Are you better going right? Are you better going left? How many, you know, what's your field goal percentage? How, what teams? Are they better offensively? Are they better defense? Are they better against a man? Are they better against a zone? So uh, all that count money, Synergy by itself is $9,000 for the whole year if you get the full package. Then they got a, a new system that helps you recruit and break down the scouting part that we give to our young ladies. And that's another $3,500 by itself. Uh, just to get the necessary tools that you need in order to scout and prepare young young ladies. And this year, I tell you, we uh, for me to want to save a lot of money, I told my staff, we're going to be the hardest working staff on campus and maybe in the country. And it kind of showed that we worked hard with what little we had and how much we accomplished with what little we had. 
And uh, that was just us putting our head down because I'm the leader. If I'm the head coach and I can get my hands dirty, they definitely can do that as assistant coaches. So but those are things that you um, that we really need. And those other, uh, uh, you call them um, shooting arms, so you shoot up where they have them, uh, a fake mm -hmm. defender, and we don't really – but we have practice guys, and they like to have gear, and a lot of gear and nutrition and snacks, uh, I try to keep the locker room full of snacks. So kudos to our alumni, wherever we went, uh, Mr. Tommy from um, the 220 club, the, uh, the uh, club uh, helps uh, coordinate the alumni to bring uh, whatever it is that my young ladies write down on a list to have snacks on the bus. Uh, we traveling next year. You know, you also asked me what, as a first year head coach, what was other things about the swipe? We play on Saturdays and Mondays. We take off early Friday morning, six o'clock sometimes, but we're still going to the Southwest part. And we, as deep South as you want to be, going to the West, Southwest. So we can have an eight and eight hours and 45 minute drive without a stop going to uh, Ruston, going to uh, Baton Rouge. And uh, we get there and you only have an hour and a half. You get off the bus and it's time to go practice. And then before you know, practice five to seven, you got a two o'clock game on Saturday. So I, in my perfect world, we'll leave on Thursday. We won't miss class. We'll practice like we always do. After class, we're already missing Friday. We drive through the night. We get there. We get a good night, good morning, sleep, sleep in. And then we have time to recuperate, then go to practice, get a good meal, breakfast, get up have a good meal, and uh, that will help us out a lot when we're going to Mississippi, when we're going to uh, Louisiana, and we're taking the bus that we can leave um, that night before uh, the night of. So, And that's going to take monies because that will give us an extra day at the hotel that we can spend versus a flight. I mean, my ladies get comfortable on the bus, but it's just like it's kind of hard getting off the bus, going right to practice on Friday, then playing at on Saturday at 2 o'clock. So... I mean, all that money could help mm -hmm. the student athletes besides summer school too. Let's not miss summer school is yeah. coming up here too. Um, need summer school dollars so all my young ladies can make sure they get into summer school and they need to at least take six hours of uh, credit hours to 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 receive the full Pell Grant and everything that they would need as a student athlete. And that schedule is going to change next year a little bit if uh, the if it actually comes to pass, as it's rumored, where now the women's games in the conference are going to be on Thursday and Saturday, and there won't be double headers anymore. So that's going to be a, a change to the travel where it'll just be your team possibly traveling on the road, you know, on a on a Wednesday or Tuesday night, leaving Tuesday night to get to wherever you need to be. Um, so I know that's going to create its own unique challenges, uh, but some interesting opportunities. You, you touched on coach, a couple of the questions that I know people had, um, you had, and you talked about this list in the 220 club about creating that list and putting together something that Rattler nation can visibly see and know what you need. You talked about the gun, you talked about the other things, um, you know, and hopefully that's something you and uh, VP Sykes can 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 create that that needs list. You know, because uh, you know folks are folks are very visual these days. So yes. you know, if they, if they like that that list you just came up with. If anybody was taking notes, whoo, that that was a list. But that's the stuff that needs to go on the list because that's what every every winning program has. Uh, it is part of what happens. So yeah, I'm 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 up on that. Yes, you. I mean, the coaches do the X and O's, and sometimes we over exaggerate the X and O's. The players make plays, so uh, I tell my players that all the time. The offense is built to get you a shot, but I can't make the shot for you. You have to make the shot. So that goes down to recruiting. You got to have the the athletes that are capable of knocking down that shot, right, or defending the ball. And um, it takes dollars to go out and recruit them in. And, you know, as you look at everybody else um, in uh, different conferences, they talk in NIL. So we ain't even bringing that up yet, um, NIL money. I'm able to recruit uh, great athletes from other um, divisions and swipe, uh, other than swipe conferences that come because of the prestige, reputation, and name that FAMU has. 
So uh, we're not even talking NIL, which a lot of the young ladies, and you see where it's at um, on the men's side or where it can go at on the women's side, i.e. Angel Reese, i.e. Caitlin Clark, some of the biggest stars, uh, Paige uh, with UConn. So, uh, you know, we got our hands full. But um, as I say, I'm not worried about the Joneses. I'm worried about what we're doing here at FAMU. And, and I know what winning looks like for FAMU. And that's all my focus is. I don't worry about – um, what's going on out there. I just know there ain't nobody going to outwork me. Uh, and that's the only thing that we need to know that I'm going to work hard. Um, and I'm going to always be passionate. And I love this game too much uh, to to let it go side. So we in great hands. But yes, I can, myself and VP AD Sykes can come up with a list and, and put it on there because it's just like my student athletes, some are visual. So I have to have the TV out on the, film, uh, uh, on the court and I go and show them the visual. And someone can just pick it up by going through through the play. So the same way uh, we have those donors, they need to be visual and see the list. And they and I understand that's your hard earned dollars, and you want to know where it's going, where it's going to. And I have no problem with communicating. I want to be able to thank everybody personally that donates. That's why I stay on top of the foundation. And I want to know weekly when money's coming in, so I can personally text you, call you, and say thank you. Uh, for your support because every penny, every dollar counts. It's to enhance and give my young ladies experience that they never experienced before because when I go back and look at myself as a student athlete, that's exactly what Pat Summit did to me. She gave me culture coming from a small town, a single parent home that I might not have experienced without basketball. So those are the same experiences that I want to give to my young lady because I know they life-changing experiences. And um help build relationships that last forever. And that, that's the sisterhood that, that I ain't going to say creating, that I've created because I'm this year one that I've created here at FAMU. And like I say, it's just more to come, bigger and better. Uh, coach, you've been great since with your time. I, I, I'm i going to just throw three more questions at you, Coach. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate you hanging in there. Uh, Rattling Nation loves this. So, I mean, they're just throwing questions left and right. Okay. One was about the nutrition table that you asked. Uh, I think you talked about a little bit, but – um, how is the nutrition recovery for your team and, and how much of a need is that? I mean, that's vital. Nutrition is a, a, a important piece. I, I teach my young ladies, you're not an automobile. Your body, you, you can't trade it in and get a new car. This is your body. And uh, proper sleep, the right food, uh, nutrition, and we talk about it. There's only certain snacks. I don't buy sugar drinks, uh, I Gatorade, Powerade to replenish, but they get water. And um, because being hydrated uh, propels you to be the best that you can be, not try. It gives you the best option to be the best person that you can be out on the basketball court. So it is highly necessary. And we do have a nutrition and we talk, we talk about that all the time, but replenishing the body, um, teaching them the right. Uh, food groups, the protein bars, I get it all for them and snacks and, and I put it into our locker room. I, we have like a little suite, but like I said, the display for football, which the young ladies don't understand, football is 60 men strong. It's mm -hmm. just 15 of us. So there's going to be a different display of what they <laughs> need and what we need, but it's just to um, be able to walk into the locker room and it's right there at their description. See, they pick it up and that's what I've tried to do uh, with them. And they do give me a list and we go off that list. Some of them I X out because it's too much sugar in it and they need more healthy uh, to replenish and give them the proper nutrition that they need uh, for their bodies. But it's vital uh, for them to have that. And, and that's just like extra dollars that I, uh, that I go out and I can buy nutrition and snacks when we're not on the road for the locker room, when we're at home, when we're practicing and they're coming in and out. Cause sometimes we go practice five o'clock, 5.45 in the morning. So I'm not expecting them to cook. I would like to have something, you know, juice, fruit juices, orange juices in the refrigerator and um, fresh fruit, apples, bananas, oranges, um, clementines, you know, I call them tangerines, uh, bananas, apples, for them to be able to grab and, uh, nutrient bars, uh, some little miniature cereal with the uh, skim milk, mm. almond milk, 2%, whatever they now skim, uh, to provide for them. So it's, it becomes a home away from home because we spend so much time in the gym. 
Yeah. Um, good stuff. Uh, next question uh, has to do with the future scheduling. Say, Coach, how soon do you begin looking for teams to schedule for next season? It's a secret. Uh -oh. But y'all ask to pay for y'all would want to be a uh, play with a, a a a team from the MEAC to bring back a little bit of rivals. Well, yo, your your prayers was answered. So I got uh -oh. a, a MEAC uh -oh. TV list. I'm waiting. The contract is already in my email. I got some power fives to bring in some guaranteed money, and the contracts are in my email, waiting for my signature. So it's on and popping. Uh, I've been working. Uh, my best friend, um, I gave him that duty. We've been working on that since I took the job in um, August, and we've been working on it since October. So I think we're about three games short, and we will have a non-conference scheduled for you, one that y'all, I'm thinking y'all will really, really like that we put together. And some home games, some home games, right, Coach? Yes, not just hey, home. There we, we, go. Have, we have there some we home go. games. We have some That's home what we're games. Talking yeah. about. Yes. yes. Gotta have some home games, man. Yes. I mean, hated, hated seeing y'all out the our, our past teams out on the road for the whole season. You never get a chance to know the girls when you know when everybody's on the road. You don't get a chance to get to know them. And, yes, anyway. and that's the other key that uh, we I talked about, alluded to at the 220. We're gonna do a better job of getting our young ladies out in the community. And definitely uh, getting more student support um, in the stands. I'm going to have my young ladies, if I have to drive the golf cart myself, and we're going to let everybody know, I'm going to get me a uh, bar to chili the megaphone, and we're going to go out, and coach is going to be on there. I'm already loud. I'm going to be louder and letting them know. <laughs> and nobody don't have no problem not to know there's a basketball game. It's going to be in town. So we're going to do more in the community. I love to have uh, more than one uh Kids' day where you get that nine, ten thousand screaming people <laughs> in the stands, whether they're cheering for you or against you, you just know the seats are full with the uh with the kids. So we're looking about kids' day. So middle school, high school, get with me. Let's plan this thing about having a kids' day in um excuse me, in the non-conference uh, season. Cause I tell you, once we get those kids in the seats, they're gonna love the product that we're gonna put out on the floor and they're gonna come back. That's awesome. Um, also, one more question for you uh, about the tour. I mean, there's plans for that summer strike tour that uh, that uh, VP Sykes likes to or will kind of do along with the alumni chapters. Do you have plans on going out on the tour this summer? Is there of any course. Happening there? Of course. Okay. Coach Pressure is a people person. I got people skills. <laughs> So I love people. I want to go out and meet the people and let them get to know me because some people be intimidated by my accolades. I'm just a good old country girl. Um, my accolades are my gift from God, uh, but I, I, I'm just as, as, as homegrown as they come and very personable. And I like to get to know everybody on a one-on-one -on -one base. And, and like I said, God is in first in my life and God is love. So I love everybody. Whether you love me or not, I have nothing but love for you. And I'll definitely be out on the tour. If y'all need me to speak to different groups, I'm willing to come out and speak. Uh, I love speaking and um, empowering young people. That's my passion and that's my gift to give back to, uh, to the young people. Uh, to empower them. So, yes, I'll be out on a tour, but I'm willing to come out and speak at women group, children groups, boys and girls, Girl Scout, you name it, big brother, little brother, whatever program, I'm willing to come out and, and bring a few of my young ladies with me also because they are the ones that you yeah. really want to see anyway and get to know them. Um, Folks, here it is now. Go ahead. Go ahead and scan it. If you haven't already, go ahead and scan the uh, the, uh, the the QR code right there on the screen. Get your phones out. Uh, or you could just simply go to the Rattler Athletic Fund. If you know where it is, you know how to get there. Uh, 0007 is the code for women's basketball. Or when you go to the link, obviously you can just go to women's basketball. $60 is the minimum. $60 for every point scored, but you can always give more. Because as you heard from Coach, the needs are plenty. And we got a lot of work to do. We're building this thing. We're we, 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 we coming. We're coming. I mean, we coming. I, I, look, I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. I get, I get killed, Coach, every time I say it. But when you say it, it sounds great. So we coming, Coach. Tell them we coming, Coach. That's we coming. We coming. And I want to have a day where fans can just come in and have a, a, a brown bag lunch and come watch practice. And, and you can come see the product for yourself. My practices are always open. 
I welcome you guys to come in. Anyway, we in Lawson and it's classrooms up there. So the doors are always open. So won't we just make it a date? Have a brown lunch bag and, and let's just get together and we could talk about it, meet the young ladies, uh, sign some autographs. I would love to make it a day. Let's have a fan day like we do for football. Come on in. I need y'all to come on and join in. It's, we got something special. Oh, man, I, I'm really, really excited about um, being back in the state of Florida, in my own state as a Floridian. So come on out. Come on, support. We need your dollars. I'll tell you, uh, they're going to benefit us in mighty, mighty ways. And my young ladies, I can tell you, we're going to appreciate you and thank you in advance And for, for I know that it's coming. So, hey, $60 sacrifice it be planting right. in some good good soil you got some seeds that'll be coming back from it. you'll reap it promise you you'll reap um, the benefits from it there it is there it is well said coach uh thank you for your time thank you for uh everything you have uh uh planted into this program this season we are excited about the future yes. and uh you 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 got a you got a home anytime you need to to talk, uh, no matter what the subject is, you got a spot. You got a place right here on the ONG Strike Zone. Uh, we will promote, we'll push, we'll, we'll we'll just sit back and listen to you talk. And we can do that for a show. Uh, whatever whatever time you need, Coach, we, we appreciate you and thank you. Uh, we're excited. Uh, congratulations. Thank you to all the ladies, all the coaches for a season, a hard season, a hard-fought season. We enjoyed watching you. So to all the players and coaches, we salute you and thank you for the way you represented FAMU this past season. And we are excited about the future of uh, FAMU uh, basketball. Well, thank you for having having me. And um, here in the near future, I'd like to bring a young lady on. And like you said, get to know them. Get to know what, uh, other than basketball, uh, I want to say kudos to my young ladies. I I knew uh, two days later after we had, I had then already told them, hey, listen, this is a dress code. We're going to the reception like the nice young ladies that we are. Let mm. them see the other side of you. So yeah. when I tell you, when we stepped off that bus and they said, look at the models. Y'all were fly. Y'all you know, were oh, fly. Yeah. Yeah. They were fly. Yeah. They look good. They look we good. Like they look women. I just yeah. wanted them to see the other side of my young ladies. And that's the culture. <laughs> Yeah. Right, that's the culture that I'm building, and I told each and every one of them be comfortable in your own skin, yes. whoever you are, be comfortable because yeah. God is God, don't judge you and us. He told us, don't judge. We're supposed to love one another and build each other up. And I build up my young ladies, so I wanted them to be able to be who they are in their own skin and walk in confidence. And that's all the swike different officers and administrators said, Thank you, um, for representing fam you in the right way. So, uh I would love for my young ladies to get on here and y'all get to know them on a on a personal one on one basis. So, hey, any anytime, uh, Coach. We we'll probably hopefully be up there for the spring for the spring game. So you know, hopefully we can uh, we can do some in person conversations uh, with with anybody that you'll shuffle our way. We'll we'll talk to anybody. I mean, we're. We're big fans. I'm, I'm telling you, big fans. So okay, well, Coach will be there because she's an avid football fan, and I'm gonna just let y'all know I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and I'm so excited. That Steel Curry might be coming back. I'm fine. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. <laughs> oh, Rattler Nation, we got ourselves a good coach. We got ourselves another, yes. another great coach. Another great coach that's going to do great things here at FAMU. So let's go ahead and get behind and support Coach Pressure, uh, Coach Bridget Gordon here. And uh, Coach, have a good night. Have a blessed night. And uh, we will, we'll, we'll see you. We'll talk to you soon, Coach. Okay. Thank you guys for having me. I'll be blessed. Yes, Thank you, yes, Coach. Okay. Thank you. All right, all right, good stuff, man. Y'all, hey, awesome. one more time. Great interview. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all, go ahead and hit that code up. Donate to the Rattler Athletic Fund. The women's basketball account is pounds, or well, the number is zero 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 seven, and uh, you know, hey, any any dollar amount, uh, but sixty dollars is the goal. Sixty dollars or more. Um, I'd love to know. I know the. I know Mike Reed had said the number was sixteen sixty seven. Mike, I don't know if you have you've ever found out or you talked to uh, Dr. Friday Stroud. Find out how far away are we from hitting that number? Because 
uh, that's a significant number. And that's a lot of that, that, that could be a significant amount of change with just, you know, a little less than 2000 Rattlers. So, uh, good.